Psycho chart playing dice, go start on who are you? Better know yourself, know your soul, gotta know your wealth. Slow your roll, get a hold, don't melt and don't you fall when I feel like hell. Well, who am I? Am I am me? I'm not the one you wanna fuck with. Late nights messing up my sleep, so I'm flustered. Taking out aggression with my pen because I trust it. Writing, trying to get myself a lamb color cut for the game. Leave from hanging by his chain, click bang. Feeling rage, feeling fire with my brain, feeling sane. And it's all we feel the flame for. No glory, no Rashi looking for Peace Weezy right now. There is the Windwall. It's burnt kind of early there. There's the CC immediately found. We'll take Penguin Kyron, trying to come over and help his team out. There's the knockup, but there's no ultimate available for Peace Weezy. And I think this will be another death picked up. Shutdown going on to Kaisa. Iantunes is here, but he's by himself for the time being. Dax is trying to come over and help. Does have the flash. Ulti. It is a positive trade that Jinx with the Kraken Slayer done does so much damage. And it is endless. Dax into the mid lane. Finding that setup on a Humes, it will fall. And look at this, Antunes continuing the dive under turret. Has that Zonya stays alive. Luru won't have the Coming same. up into this top side. Will you be there in time to save your top laner? Though there's the Solar Flare coming out. Jaffe, just playing that Q a little bit. Schmeckles, go! 
pick up the kill, he does it! And Goes that Olaf is able to survive once again. Here's the engage from Hughes onto Peace Weezy. Unstoppable during that pack versus the assistance coming through from Will Tank Penguin, but you can't hit through that wind wall. There's TP coming through right now. Look at this aggressive play from Will Tank Penguin trying to kill off the ADC, and they do fight. There's gonna be a fight, it's gonna be explosive, but they have to get Will Tank Penguin there soon. Superashi trying to find a way into the pit. Hughes poking out, but the Baron and it's taking oh! <laughs> The ultimate out smiting Dax! Going to go oh, but unstoppable force finds Fluru! There's an opportunity to Hughes looking to get out the damage, but it's mostly zoned off from Jaffe. Dr. Speckles and Superashi trying to do a little bit of damage as they can, but cannot. Hughes going to get out by Moonfall. Dax putting out the damage and is going to put. Game number two of our second to last week of FOF. We have two contenders that are looking at the bottom of the table right now, fighting for that sixth place position, that final way into the playoffs right now. It is New Way Tsunami against Art of War Esports. Put your bets in, because this is going to be a tense game. I am joined by the war leader. I'm so happy to watch this game. This game means so much in terms of standings for so many different teams, but quickly, let's get into the ones in this game. Basically, a loss from either side eliminates them from playoffs. Uh, be, <laughs> to, to be frank, I mean, Art, Art of War gets eliminated if they lose at all, and New Wave Tsunami gets put into pretty dire straits. We're going to see Junglers being the first picked. Uh, Volibear pretty heavily prioritized New Wave Tsunami responding in kind with a pretty good matchup into it in that Jarvan. Uh, and Ezreal picked up for giving me a reset down in that bot lane, answered by Zeri. This draft is flying. Yeah, no, okay, so Zeri's a cool one. I think that's relatively reasonable. Or Riri with the Rakan as well. That Karma Ezreal locked in for Reset and Ollie. They played it yesterday versus RLS. It, you know, it, Reset was the only team, a member on that team to go Deathless. Didn't really participate in too much other than the farm game. But, you know, it had some potential. Didn't falter too hard in laning phase. So, it, it, I, if they have the confidence, you know, why not go back and do it? Meanwhile, um, a lot of bans targeted towards uh, the top side of the map for New Wave Tsunami. Uh, I'm noticing they're, they're definitely faltering, um, you know, they're, they're looking to take away from Valiancy. Valiancy is a player who, if they pop off, they can do so much. Um, and so I'm not surprised to see that taken away. There's that set and that Camille and potentially that Trundle also taken away. Obviously, Swifty has been seen on that Trundle previously. It is the Orn locked in for Valiancy. That's not necessarily that, uh, you know, kind of high energy pick that you expect necessarily. Oh. But speaking of high energy, there it is, Seaborg picking up that Kiana. We've seen that thing be lethal before. I'm surprised it got through this far. And final lock in there, the Mordekaiser for Slowbro. Yep. And uh, final lock in for New Wave Tsunami. They're looking towards Victor. Victor is going to be matching Kiana in the mid lane. So, wow, whirlwind of a draft. Let's talk about these compositions. So, from the side of New Wave Tsunami, they've drafted themselves uh, a, a bit of a weird comp, admittedly. It's a lot of good champions, but I'm not sure that they share similar interests. Uh, meanwhile, Art of War Esports very much wants to go in and start the fight. Let Yon Yon stack up those stacks and let them be a superstar later in the game as this goes. So, uh, personally, I really like the way that Art of War's comp uh, turned out. And New Wave Tsunami, I'm a little unsure what they're hoping to do. Yeah. Okay. So I, I want to do I want to do deep breakdown because obviously this is going to be a game we've seen both of these teams. Um, Carried isn't the right word, but it is the right word for the role. ADCs have been huge for these teams. We've seen reset was at the front and center of that win against UB. One of only two teams to take them down is New Wave Tsunami. Reset had a huge game on Zeri that game. Yon Yon also front and center for both of those wins for AWE has been huge. So looking at this ADC matchup, I'm expecting just players wise, there's going to be a lot of pressure there. Yon Yon, like you say on that Zeri is a champion that wants to kite backwards on a team that wants to go forwards. So it's not that she's incapable, but it is way easier to get away from her cues than it is to run into them, right? So I'm yeah. worried that, you know, you, you definitely want to see something more like a Jinx obviously was banned out, but there are other strong options right now that are meta relevant. I think even something like a Caitlyn would have been really strong here. Um, get that lane dominance, uh, would have been able to probably pressure for some turret plants out, out clears the Ezreal. Instead, they do decide to go for that Zeri, which I think could struggle more in lane, has way less kill pressure in the early phases now, especially she really takes two, three items to really come online in those mid game skirmishes and late game team fights. So they're, they're putting themselves in a little bit of a back foot with that Zeri. I like that Crims has gone for an early game oppressive jungler. Crims is a high, or is trying to be at least, has made those changes to be a very high-paced jungler. Um, so 
it's it's worth looking at. It's worth seeing Crims go for those earlier plays. We've also seen Seabrog play very, very selflessly going around the map and finding kills for other people in the side lanes. Meanwhile, if you look at New Wave Tsunami, they have engaged, they have terrain control, and they have Victor Ezreal Karma. That is a good stationary backline to try and force these team fights to happen where you want them to. And I think if New Wave has the ability to say, hey, you guys are going through this choke, we're going to chuck Cataclysm, we're going to chuck an Ornhorn, Victor W on top of all of that, the only thing that New Wave is going to have to worry about is a Kiana, and you cannot catch Ezreal all that easily. I think that New Wave has drafted themselves the harder composition to play for sure, but I think it has more potential. Yeah, I, I, I like the way you worded that, because as I look at the champions that New Wave Tsunami have drafted, it's hard for me to imagine a state 40 minutes deep into a very closely contested game where they don't actually win just off the backs of ornaments coming in, uh, Victor just being the most powerful champion between either of these two teams. And so I think it is going to come down a lot to can New Wave Tsunami survive? And if they do, how well can Sunny navigate these team fights? She's shown to be very proficient but also shown to uh, maybe get a little ahead of herself in lane. Uh, I, I think especially back to that Kai'Sa game, it's uh, caught up and a few deaths come through and it makes it really hard, even though uh, starts to get online. So hopefully uh, she's going to rein it in a little bit and get ready to pilot some tough team fighting Victor. I, I think the wave tsunami have what it takes both in their players and their champions to be art of war esports, but it's going to be an early onslaught. Yeah. Um, and the other thing to look at, really, <clears throat> is that, you know, Victor as a champion struggles in the earlier stages. You really have to wait for those items to come through, and especially those upgrades. It's going to be a duration-based thing. Jarvan can help the mid lane, help boost that Victor up. So can Volibear. Obviously, Victor isn't the safest champion in lane, but if we see Swifty start to play more uh, mid lane centralized, which I think would be a good idea. You don't need to be camping the Orn. You don't really need to help the Ezreal Karma out too much. Maybe for counter ganking, I'm expecting to see Crimson in that bot lane a lot to try and scale up that Zeri, get her to that point that she needs to be at to be that central damage carry that they need at the middle of this team. But... If we see Swifty playing towards the mid lane, setting up Sunny, she's not going to really have super hard time. It, 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 as soon as Seaborg goes down a little bit, Sunny has the option to poke out very aggressively, really can only get engaged on from a gank, assuming that you position yourself well against this Kiana. But <clears throat> you've got the wave clear, you've got the poke, you don't really have to worry too much in that laning phase anymore. The further ahead that Victor gets, the more impossible this becomes. Same thing, however, falls on the side of Seaborg. That Kiana, though plays a very different role to Victor, still has big terrain control, still has very heavy damage, but it comes in the form of burst and it comes online a lot earlier and a lot more directly. I think if that Kiana gets big in the early stages from the assistance from Crimson, whether it's just in the solo, whatever it might be, uh, Victor doesn't get the chance to scale. Karma doesn't get the chance to scale. Ezreal, Jarvan, they all disappear. The Cataclysm becomes a death ball for anybody on the red team. Uh, so New Wave Tsunami is going to, I think, have to play centralized, and though we will see this game very defined, I think, as it goes later by these two AD carry players of Yon Yon and Reset, I think that the early stages could really be defined by Seaborg and Sunny. Yeah, so I th think we've uh, talked quite a bit about these compositions, and uh, let let's start talking a little more about the stakes and how these teams feel. I had the privilege to uh, talk to members of both teams, and they're both feeling pretty confident, and agree that the opponent that they're playing today is one that they should be able to beat. And what that tells me is that we're going to see a very exciting game of League of Legends. Uh, I, I'm absolutely stoked to see these two teams face off. Uh, <laughs> it's really going to come down to it. Uh, yeah, no, I think that there's a lot of potential for these two to really go off. And I th so here's the thing, right, is that we talk about New Wave Tsunami or in their mid game. I think their decision making is really hit or miss. Uh, I think that that's where they have their, their their strengths from, where they have their potential from, is if they can get into those situations where they're strong in the mid game, right? They're going to have a really good time with this. Art of War is a team who I think is really consistent, but they're consistent both on their positives and on their negatives. I've been talking very publicly all season. They overstack the hell out of their objective takes. They'll put five people on a dragon that maybe needs half, you know? It, it, it's, it's something that uh, Art of War, I think, is maybe not known for but it's something they consistently struggle with and it would be important to see if new wave tsunami is able to punish that type of thing not to mention if art of war gets control of a pit early if they do commit those five players it's going to be very difficult for this terrain control composition that new wave tsunami has to try and get in there in any way but we have avoided the delay without mention we have made it into game finally we're going to see awe art of war esports versus new wave tsunami 
yeah, and I'm super excited. We're going to see a really basic star five points from both teams. So let's continue talking about how this is going to shave up to be. I mean, we, we've talked quite a bit about the compositions. We've talked quite a bit about the teams, and I think a lot of eyes are going to be in this mid lane early I on. I have things to vent time. about. Yeah. I have absolutely things to vent about. Okay, Yon Yon. Heal is better here. And I, 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 we have plenty of time to go into it. I don't really think I need to go into it too much. You're exhausting an Ezreal. Uh, damage reduction is nice. Heal is going to give you more in the early stages uh, by a lot, and that's when that summoner spell really matters for an AD carry. You're not going to be using it uh, very effectively on Valiancy or Swifty. And if you're getting CC'd to the point where you have to use that exhaust, Sunny's going to kill you. That is a complete waste of a summoner spell, in my opinion. Uh, I also want to look at the items for these two AD carries. I want to be super critical. Neither of you are in an all-lane lane. Don't buy Doran's Blade. Grab your longsword, get that health potion, give yourself the sustain to stay in lane, stay alive, and keep that gold coming into your pockets. I don't think either of them needs to go for that. I'd even be happier with the tier for reset right now. I think that is going to put both of these ADCs in uncomfortable positions, but I really want to look towards Yon Yon more. The, the exhaust is nice on reset, so then you can get that Kiana off of you. Get that get that uh, Ariri's or Khan slow down something, right? But there's just no value, I don't think, for Yon Yon. So uh, we'll see whether or not that comes into a big play. Maybe it won't. But that's something to keep an eye on as we go through these early stages. And really what we're going to have to look at first is these junglers who are both pathing towards the top side of the map. And not just both pathing towards the top side of the map, but so far have elected to full clear. And frankly, I'm shocked from the side of Crims that they, they are electing a full clear on the solo bear. I mean, um, there, was, there was an interesting thing that happened last game. It was Swifty on that, or not last game, last game I played. It was Swifty on that Volo Bear on the other team. Ooh. You know, I see level two get a fourth flash from reset. Very early. Good aggression from a re, -re utilizing that level spike very well. But yeah, what I was going to say is when you full clear on Volo Bear, you lose a lot of the tempo of the champions. Champion's very good at early game engaging and snowballing a lane. So when you try and full clear your jungle, it gives so much time for the enemy jungler to go and match you and counter gank you wherever you decide to go. And especially, Volibear is not the fastest clearer, and we're going to see Crims finish that boss side and have to look towards mid lane. I actually really like this. Now, I, was be I was being critical before, but this is a, a different spin on it that I'm really glad to see. Crims is going to look towards that mid lane, and if they find an early kill on the Sunny, it's going to do so Ooh. much. Swifty is there in the wings. The barrier's already popped out of Sunny. The flag and drag misses, but Seaborg has been brought so low. The flash there from Swifty, and surely this Kiana goes down. Double stun to turn! Seaborg doesn't go down! Crims picks up the kill! What a turn from the Kiana! Oriri's there for the assistance. There's a big wave crashing into turret here. I don't know if Sunny can afford to pick this one up. I think Sunny's going to be safe enough. The health bars aren't the most in favor. We're seeing some brawl up in the top side. Slowbro getting a lot of sustained damage out. But yeah, I think uh, New and Tsunami got a little too ahead of themselves. They they saw that, that AWB overcommitted to a play and then overcommitted in turn. Once Kiana flashes out, I know it's really close, but without an offensive summoner spell, you just can't reach for that. So we're going to see Swifty dropping early to the side of Crims. Uh, and, and I will say, I think it's really important that Sunny doesn't die because it means that she is going to pick up a pretty solid... A uh, gold lead open. We're going to see uh, a pause come out. It looks like Seaborg having a bit of connection now, issues. Clearly, wasn't an issue on that last play. Uh, War leader, were you looking at this game and thinking to yourself, you know what? We're running really nicely on schedule. It'd be good if we had some delays <laughs> because that's what we yeah. got on hand at the moment. Had a a little bit of a delay so far. We had a. I don't know if anybody managed to notice we had to stall on that draft for a little bit, but now we have a pause coming through. Um. Early game aggression from AWU has worked out very nicely. Hopefully we're going to see Seaborg get back into this game as soon as possible. Assist was uh, picked up for Seaborg, but the fact that Sunny's been allowed to stay and pick up this, uh, you know, what is a gold lead? You know, you, you're going back with more. You've got 13 CS advantage. That is more than the assist is worth. Um, uh, Sunny's going to have more money here. So uh, even though that you do pick up that assist, it's very good for your Volley Bear, very good for Crims, and very good for, uh, for shutting down Swifty's early play. Swifty's back on the map nice and quick. Hasn't really been a big issue for them. Uh, Sunny, she's put herself in a very nice position as well. Does have that gold lead. Wasn't forced to recall, like you said. And, you know, like, it's good, but it hasn't really been, like, a big swing. This isn't going to put AWE in, like, a perfect position to keep punishing New Wave Tsunami um, as a result. Yeah, so we are getting... A confirmation that uh, it's the mid laner from the side of AWB Seaboard, DC from this game, so we're just going to have to wait until that connection gets restored. Until then, 
So, man, we I know there's a lot to talk about. We're going to have to keep talking. So let's so let, let's keep talking, right? So Sunny getting a pretty solid early advantage. What does that mean for the state of this mid lane and the game as a whole as it goes on? I mean, I think I think mainly what it means, it, you know, really when I look at this as a whole, what it means is both junglers don't have flash. I think that's the end result of this is that the gank pressure is down for both of them. Swifty loses out on the buff, I believe, lost out on the uh, the blue buff, gave it over, gave a refresh to Crims, eh, whatever, you know. Um, I think uh, that Swifty not having Flash is not a big deal necessarily. Jarvan has a lot of ways to make his ganks work. Uh, just getting in there with the flag and drag has the slow from the W. Not as big of a deal. Crims, however, might struggle a little bit more with ganking. You were talking about how important that early pressure is from Volibear. Not having that Flash online does cause a lot of problems. Um, because if you cannot close the distance fast enough, if you go over a ward and you try to make the gank work, it's not necessarily going to. Being able to flash Bear Slap has stolen that one completely away from Moodyer at this point. Um, it gives his ganks a lot of value, I think. Um, so that being taken away, I think, is a bigger hit towards AWE, and, though you know, it's 300 gold. It can go either way. Um, but I think that is really the big uh, takeaway from this, um, and, and, you know, as much as the analysis can do. Yeah, so... Uh, we are actually going to cut to a break for a moment as we wait for uh, Seaborg to figure out those connection issues. Uh, I hate to put this one farther away. Okay, you know what? Grass, that's just how it is. Yeah? You know what? There's a very convenient window here. This is a great time for all of you guys to check out this brand new FOF Connect that came out on the previous Monday. I had a hand in making it. So did Cass. Uh, there's some funny stuff in there. There's some really insightful stuff. Eddie, once again, doing a great job on the interviewing. Um, this is a really great window to go and check that one out. I'm sure somebody will get that one into the chat as soon as possible. Although, Seaborg maybe just checked into that one. So maybe, yeah. you know, maybe once the reading's done, maybe we have an opportunity to go back in the game. It is still worth looking at. You have a lot of break time in between our games. It's definitely uh, worth the check. Not to mention that there is a brand new shop you can get your pre-orders in for some FOF merchandise. If you see the opportunity to, if you want to help the cause, this is a great organization. Playing League of Legends, getting some people in, having some fun, giving money to charity. It is definitely worth the expense. And you get yourself a nice hoodie. Who wouldn't? I know. I absolutely I'm stoked to get a hoodie for FOF. That being said, we have seen Seaboard reconnect to the game, so it's only a matter of time before I get back and rolling. I already have confirmation. That Thank you, Shergan. The game is rolling. So, uh, again, we've talked a lot about a mid, the mid. We've talked a lot about the jungle. Something we haven't talked a lot about is this, the advantage that Slubber is building that top side with CS. Yeah, and it's big. You know, uh, we have the time. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Am I right? I think it's seven CS that's just sitting I there. Not to seven. mention that that not to mention that there's already six up right there. Slow bro, it, it is building. I think that's not really a, uh, kind of surprising. It's Mordekaiser and Orn. Orn's just got to chill out there, occasionally get some grass procs. You know, get those items rolling in for the team. Um, that's all that you really need as an Orn. Um, but. I think that this top lane could be detrimental. Obviously, these two are really going to be big on their ultimates during the team fights, taking key members out. I think how Slowbro plays it is going to be much more important than how Valiancy plays it because Valiancy gains so much value from just hitting level 13 forward. Um, I think that's what we're really going to have to look at for the Ornn is whether or not you can get to that stage in the game, whether or not you can gain that value um, from from the passive, which is where a lot of the, the value of this pick goes. Um, it'd also be valuable if Seaborg could just invest a little bit of money into some internet connection right now because it's just such a big stall. I don't know if we have any word on whether or not the game has is is going. You know, it should restart. I don't have any. Yeah. I don't. I don't have any. Uh, Gary, you know, have we? I, I missed it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, well, we know this game's going to be starting up really soon, so we're just going to keep talking and talking about the game state. Um, yeah, we talked about how important it is for Orn to get to the late game, and so far. In terms of the early play in mid lane, it goes a little awry. I mean, things end up all right for the side of AWE. But that critical flash cooldown down, and we are finally back in this game of League of Legends Valley. Now you see Slipper brawling. Welcome back to the action, everyone. This is uh, this is top lane gate coming in right now. Crins is up there. There's the flash online for Valiancy. We'll see how this one plays out. What, are you going to greet for the engage on Slowbro? That would be it if you go for that one. Valiancy Crims waiting patiently. Oh dear. Oh, do we have to do we have to resynchronize? 
Are we resynchronizing? I believe that we are resynchronizing right now. As uh, you know, you guys heard Crims is here. We see what what uh, Valiancy might have been greeting for right now. Is uh, we do see Swifty on this top side. So this is all this is all fresh now. There might be a gank coming through. Surely it is. There's Crims immediately in great cancellation with the dash there and a beautiful flash. Valiancy reacting quickly and getting stuff done right there. Able to uh, work his way out of that uh, just awful situation in the top lane. Yeah, but speaking of awful situations in the top lane, this CS lead's about to get even worse because that is a freeze set up in that top side. Until Lola Bear leaves, it's going to be tough to break, and Swifty's going to have to come do it. Ollie coming out from bottom side, giving Sunny a little bit of support, trying to prevent Seaboard from being able to get that all in on the victors. Currently down a little bit of XP, but should pick it up off the wave. Um, and yeah, oh. Swifty is going to have to come up off the top side to break this freeze, but so is Crims. Both junglers really heads up. Swifty's here first. There's the engage. The flash already burned from Slowbro, and there it goes. And now there's the 2v1 available. There are some lower health bars. I don't know if Crims wants to take this, though. Engage looking forward right now onto Swifty. And here is Seaborg as well. That early rotation is so valuable, as now you have your Kiana here. Swifty able to escape, but I don't think Valiancy will share the same treatment right now. Getting beaten down by this Volibear. Trying to trade back. It's not going to come through. Giving the kill over to that Kiana. And it's going to be on Sunny to try and even this one out. That is a great roam. We're talking about the uh, the, the way that Seaborg plays so selflessly for the sidelines. And here it is demonstrated in the early stages. Yeah, and we're going to have to see if we can turn some of that selflessness into selfishness. As now with a lot of gold on this Kiana, it's going to be up to Seaborg to enable their teammates. And most importantly, themselves to get a lot of damage and shut down Sunny. who's had some time to pick up a solid CS lead. Seaborg going in for a trade, but isn't going to find that much of a victory. Yeah, it's it's not huge. Uh, like you say, Kiana really needs to back before she can make use of any of that gold. She does have the level six online now, so maybe there's some room to go for an engage. Sunny has that barrier back, gonna make it really difficult. Something I want to give props to: Ollie really got caught in bot lane uh, last time that they played this composition, and, and seeing those early roams I think is a really good call. And giving Ezreal the bonus XP, I don't see Oriri being able to find an engage onto this Ezreal until there's level 60. It's just, just no way to lock him down. Uh, reset would have to E for a CS and then close their eyes for a bit. That would be the only way that there's anything coming. I think that it would be a great play right now for Ollie to just go be on the map. You have wards in pocket. Just go cause problems. Go do things. You don't need to sit here and sap XP from your Ezreal. Uh, and you don't need the XP. Your Karma, you've already got your abilities online. Your shielding's going to come in in the later stages. And it's mostly going to be on your gold that you generate. Get your spell thieves from somewhere else. Go bug Seaborg. Go try and invade with Swifty. I think this is a, 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 an issue right now for Ollie is that they aren't finding their way onto the map, and I think it's holding back the composition that New Wave has built for themselves. Yeah, we're going to have to see how that ward quest comes online. That's something I noticed in the replay of the last one. But before I get to talk about that, Swifty trying to make their presence felt in this bottom side, but is going to be scouted out. Um, so not too much going to happen there. We're going to have to see if there's a skirmish in this river. I have to think Crims on the Volibear a little stronger. Kiana's close by. But there we go. That's Ollie leaving lane like he wanted them to. And being yes. in that position means that that pink ward does live for another 10 seconds. <laughs> Seaborg has to come over. And it doesn't seem like much, but that's the kind of stuff where we see... The, the roams do really matter because now Swifty already on the buff, Volibear still walking. Those are the little kinds of advantages that you as a support can build for your team and accelerate your team, especially in that XP department. So important to the side of New Wave Tsunami. And you know what? I'm willing to bet Reset's going to hit six a minion early as a result. If not one minion early, then maybe a couple. I think that uh, that will give Reset a window to cause problems, clear this wave out, and crucially get the recall off before there's any danger in this lane. Uh, we might see a setup, though, right now. Sunny has taken that blue buff. I don't know. They have the pyro in the bot lane. They don't have it in the mid lane. Might be a gank going for the mid lane. I'm very curious to see what this Victor's doing, but even more so, there's that Volibear in the bot side right now. It's just going to clear out some vision. I think that'll be the maximum of it. Um, yeah, uh, just interesting uh you know little little interactions you know you're talking about how important those situations are where you can just find those wins and you know what you do that once it saves you 10 seconds if you do that every single time you see the opportunity to you're gonna find minutes and that's so important talk to any jungler about how important one minute is a a any player anybody who has any value of their own time <laughs> talk to them about how important a minute it is if you can start taking that away from the enemy team that's gonna be really important objectives being traded left and right 
And speaking of value for your own time, really heads up play from Swifty. Your composition, not favored in the early game. You're waiting to get to late game. So as soon as you see Volibear's on that bottom side of the map, you know that dragon's gone. So walk up, get an objective for yourself. If you can get an old gold influx onto the Orn, who's really far behind, you can get a gold influx onto Sunny, who could scale up to be the big carry of this one. And a lot of focus is on her. If you can get a solid, you know, 300 gold of plates onto that victor that's certainly worth an early infernal drake yeah i'd say so uh obviously it's one point towards soul but they weren't able to pressure it just yet big trade from seaborg but really not that much damage that seeker's arm guard really reducing a lot of that no it's not a positive trade for sunny that could have gone a lot worse meanwhile speaking of trading Slowbro, looking for something in that top side that's going to be the extent of it i want to draw eyes back to that cs stiff in the bot lane right now it is favoring yon yon but not only that ollie has been given uh, uh, level 6 at the cost of Yon Yon having a level advantage right now on the ADC. Levels are worth so much, especially pre-level 9 for Zeri, because that is getting you closer and closer to that Q-Max. It's either easily 700 gold worth of stats, uh, just on the ability level up and the, 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 the stats that you gain from leveling up on its own. And right now, Sunny, under a little bit of pressure. Obviously, there's no level 6 right now on so a reread. So careful. I don't think you need it. Oh, and that's the flash over the wall. Crims is there. Seaborg dropping the ulti one more time. And there's no way to get out of that right now. Sunny with no vision anywhere around that mid lane. And uh, that's that's that. Oriri's there. That's level six picked up for that. Rakan, great play from AWE. Yeah, a, bit, a little bit of disrespect. Uh, I know that the Onion recalled, but you don't know that Oriri recalled. And even though the Rakan is not at level six, can't charm you. Doesn't matter. Crims is over the wall. You don't know where they are either. And my goodness, that's exactly how this game can start getting out of hand. Kiana is now going to complete that Prowler's Claw, which is going to be a Ooh. really solid spike on these all ins from the side of Seaborg. And Sunny, now without barrier, does hold on to Flash critically, but is going to have a pretty difficult time dealing with the all ins now, especially from multiple members of. Uh, from AWE, which I've shown they're willing to do multiple times throughout this game. A little bit of a rewind from our spectator, but that's okay. I'm still excited. Uh, no amount of delays can take the wind out of my sails anymore. I am so stoked for the way that this game progresses. And for the most part, it's kind of been progressing to plan for both teams. Yeah, uh, maybe uh, maybe one of them is playing uphill. But, you know, like you say, it is, it is not exactly going off. I like that uh, Slowbro saving uh, or trying to save the ulti there. But it just gets cancelled out. Valiancy, once again, that technical advantage in that top lane mechanically has been just outplaying Slowbro so far, and that's why there's that kill on the Orn at the moment. That's why Ooh, Slowbro doesn't have it, but there's that mid lane play. They are able to pick up the plates, but it's just on a Jarvan. Sunny, unable to get any gold from that as it was three people answered in the mid lane. And hey, Yan Yan, with this level advantage, can you take on Reset? Honestly, Ezreal, the stronger champion at this point in the game, just with that Sheen online, Heartbound Asks, and Kindle gem. Max uh, matching there from Yon Yon. So there is more gold on the side of the Zeri, but Zeri takes a little bit longer to come online right now. But Seaborg is already online trying to trade with Sunny. Yeah, but that uh, last Q is going to go wide, and that's the damage dealer there. That reset uh, wall Q, for lack of better phrasing. I think mountain is the terrain, uh, or earth is the terrain, but that, that missing oh. is going to be something that's up on the way, but Ollie is the one caught out. And yeah, there you go. A couple of ults burned. In fact, three ults burned for that support, but still, critical pick means Seaborg's now 3-0. I'd love if I could just draw on your guys' screens right now, but that space right now between the bottom side middle brush and dragon and raptors has been permanently controlled by AWE. And look at how much it's gaining them. Here they are coming in the lane right now. Reset. Uh -oh. Two summoners available. Has the flash and the E. Gonna have to burn both. Does get out of there. And I don't think that that's anything really traded. Now the engage oh? on Sunny once again. There's no mana. Greeting out for those minions, I would say. You don't have any way out of here, Sunny. You're out of mana. There's the flash burnt Seaborg over the wall. That is flash traded. That was so greedy from Sunny for absolutely no reason. Great flash there from Seaborg. Is able to just walk out of the Cataclysm. Kiana doesn't care about no terrain. She controls that. And she is out of there. Seaborg with the solo kill. Yeah, and at this point, we're going to start to see Seaborg come into their own. Fed on this Kiana, put against a matchup where you have to put Sunny behind. How long can it last? It needs to last as long as possible. Victor will be a monster. It's a matter of when, and it's a matter of if it happens in this game. Yeah, if it happens right now, and I think that's what AWE needs to be playing on, just the ifs, you know? If we can close this game off as early as possible. But at the same time, it's 
if NWT can scale to that later stage. There's, there's a lot of uncertain factors at the moment, and really both these teams rely on different windows, in my opinion, to get these advantages. As much as Yon Yon can do a lot of damage in these later stages, it's not going to match a Victor. You know, uh, Azeri has good damage. It's not great. It's really her kiting potential and her survivability that makes her so strong. Doesn't matter too much if you're getting hit by a Victor and an Ezreal in the later stages. Those are two champions that can chunk squishies come the late game. And, you know, is that going to be the value? Is it going to get to that stage? Or is Yon Yon just going to be allowed to chase down and clean up all these fights? Oh, speaking Swifty, of chasing. Unaware of the dangers, it is your own jungle, but nothing is safe. The blue buff, I believe, was finished off, but so is Swifty. Going towards that dragon number two, AWE. Again, this vision control line in their bot side earns them a kill. Yeah, and the vision has been the name of the game so far. If we look at the support vision score, doubled. If we look at the ADC vision score, well, that's a 10 times multiplier. The mid lane, three times there. And it, we can see it, and it results in death after death after death. I think the last four deaths from the side of uh, New Wave Tsunami have come from that line of vision that they have been not been able to keep down. And wow, AWE <laughs> putting on a masterclass of how that vision pays dividends, and it's paying even more and dividends when you know exactly where Jarvan has to go, being so careful, and now yeah. set the play out. Very well played from Swifty to make it happen, but obviously a rough situation. They bring up the support, they bring up the mid laner, but do they really want to fight this? Your composition's no. not online. The Gianna's really fed, ultimately. It's going to be a retreat to the second Rift Herald. How about it should reset? be AWS for the take, and oh my goodness. Great reset goes by <laughs> Let's oh, get a replay of this one. I don't know where this value of exhaust has come from. Maybe I'm a little bit tilted. It's not not necessarily resets play. It's just why do you need it? You can use it right here. You can use it right here. Nope. Okay. That, that's it. No use of the exhaust coming through from reset. Isn't able to stay alive. I don't know how much it would have really helped. Seaborg is so big on that Kiana right now. Engage in the top side. And look at how far back Swifty is. But you're so far away from your team. But you are with Sunny. Trying to take this 1v1 right now with Slowbro. Meanwhile, Yan Yan taking the fight versus Valiancy and Ollie. You can't deal any damage. And you know what? There's that uh, exhaust doing some dividends right there. Now they're going to take the chase on Ollie. Sunny unable to take the remaining 1v1 against Slowbro, who has those bonus Jarvan Stash flash over the wall from Crims. And that is five kills picked up Matt Wide AWE all over this game. Yeah, and all over this game is exactly how I would describe it at this point. Slowbro, 50. 40, sorry, CS lead in that top lane. Volibear making their presence felt cross map. Mid lane? Oh, well, that's a dumpster fire for the side of New Wave Tsunami. Sunny finding three deaths for herself. Not how you want a victor to scale into this game. And Kiana becoming a monster. Even able to kill what is normally an unkillable ADC <laughs> from Gimme a Reset who finds their first death of the weekend. That is uh, the first one. Still no kill participation, unfortunately, on Give Me a Reset this weekend. It's been a very negative one effect in those stats. Um, but, uh, you know, what can you do? It hasn't necessarily been bad play. Just been around the map, has been out macroed so far, and even still, AWE crushing so far in these early stages. They have a super fed Kiana Crims scaling up nice and big in these early stages. Reset picking up those assists, but hey. You know, you can take your time on Zeri, it's not that big of a deal, and on the other side, Sunny isn't there yet. Reset, not there yet. Valiancy, two more levels to go before you can start getting those ornaments online, but that's the start. It's really about that end point. It's not looking good right now. New Wave Tsunami, very, very far behind, and I think what we saw them do at the beginning of this season was start to go for those desperation plays, get into places where you're not expecting them to be, try and find an odd number fight just try and get any advantage and what we've seen from them recently has been anything but they're just playing slow in these late stages trying to slow the game down and you're too far behind for that now you need to start going for those desperation plays get some gold in your pocket i'd be interested to see if they can get that mindset change and start going for it yeah and they're gonna have to first things first clear that pink board in your bot side jungle i think it's been there since about five minutes into the game and it just gives away so much information swifty's not able to get anything done anywhere even slow over the top laner ah oh, i've been in this situation as a jungler it feels so bad but it's what happens when you lose your early game as hard as new wave tsunami have lost theirs here and as a result it's going to be vola bear stronger than swifty for almost all stages of the game and Hey, is that a Zanya's coming in on the Volibear? I really like that itemization choice from Grimms. 
Uh, wild. Def uh, you know, if you want. Uh, it's not awful. Obviously, Volley Bear does have some AP scalings. Uh, it doesn't hurt your damage necessarily. Gives you some tankiness. Gives you that amazing active that the item comes bundled with. But, uh, I think there's more to look at right now than that. It's the Serpent's Fang being done on the, the Kiana. It is 18 minutes oh into the game. God. There is damage top lane. There's damage mid lane. There's a fair bit of damage out of the bot lane right now. Sunny has been unable to to get online this entire game right now going for the double defensive items i think we've talked about this on the cast before you can go crown you can go zonya's for the love of god don't go both if you do you've already lost you do not have the damage to make the tankiness worthwhile it is a waste of money don't go both of those items consecutively especially when you're a primary damage carry that needs to be something to break down what awe puts in front of them and if Sunny is planning on finishing that Zonya second, which she might be, obviously that Seekers was picked up for the laning phase, but if she does do that, it's gonna hurt and so badly stunt that Victor from getting online until four items. Yeah, and uh, well, obviously by the time we're at four items, I think uh, New Wave Tsunami's gonna be pretty happy. So uh, maybe don't put all your eggs in that basket. There's still a lot of game to go until you get to that point. And so far it's resulted in Hextech soul point for the side of AWE, and if there's one to soul that's absolutely devastating to your victory chances, it is definitely this one. New Wave Tsunami have to be terrified of the position. I, I think it's reasonable that they don't challenge that because they can't, you know? Right. Uh, they have no, no vision control, they can't see their bot side, they haven't been able to see their bot side for probably eight minutes now. Um, and I want to say, amazing from AWE to consistently go in there, clear those wards out, stay in the jungle. Make sure you can't replace that vision. Make sure you can't clear any of it. Go in. Recall. Stay in their jungle. Make sure this bot side has been theirs. And it has been all game. Swifty has been able to pick up some CS across the map. But hasn't been able to go bot lane this whole time. Nobody's really been allowed in that bot side jungle except for AWE. And it gives them three of the four quadrants of the jungle. Talk about how hard it is to try and control the map when you only get a quarter of it. You know, AWE. See, look at this. Again, they're just sitting here shadowing the Kiana. And here's New Wave Tsunami coming over. They think that they might have a catch. This could end badly. Yeah, I think as long as Gimme a Reset doesn't take the risk of walking into that dark jungle, you at least need your support there to provide a shield before you can do that. And I think recalls are going to come through. So the threat has subsided for now, but it is scary in there. And I just want to give a shout out to a Riri for this vision control. Uh, absolutely smurfing on their opponent in that department. Double the vision score. We've been seeing vision playing an absolutely massive role in this entire game thus far. And I have to imagine it's going to continue. Yeah. Uh, I... Krim... Sorry. Sorry. Uh, sorry, to, uh, sorry to pause and then continue my point, but I had a chance to talk to them, some of the members of AWE earlier today, specifically to Yan Yan and Crimson. The thing that they both told me is that the way that AWE plays is going to depend on how our Riri plays. And right now, our Riri is playing pretty hot on this Rakan in a pretty nice and comfortable position. And Valiancy might find more than they're bargaining for so Here's far as how it looks like this top lane. Hard commitment to this top lane. I said they're going to stack five people. Are we going to cross map? Are we going to try and answer this? What's going to be the play from NWT? I think they need to do something right now. Sunny with that recall indicates that they're going to try and play for this top side. There's the engage from Oriri. Crims over the top. Bye bye, Ollie. There's no way you're making it out of that one alive. There's the smite and the ignite tick down. Sunny is there, but it is too late. And now reset. Oh, it's also in the mid lane. Bye bye. It is so close. Trying to go for that play. But you just don't have the items that that Kiana does online. It must be well played from uh, Reset to try and keep this one working. So you just walk too close to the wall. You've got that flash available. You have to respect it. There's no way to do it. You're stunned up and taken down. Reset. Walking a little bit too far forward there. Gets taken out. Both summoners are still online. We go back to this fight well, in the Sunny. top side. Yon, Yon zoning off too. Yon, how do you get there, Sonny? How did things happen this way? It must have been a pull in from Slowbro. Yon, Yon able to clean up that kill. There's the engage from Valiancy, but it's 2v4. This top line, and I think that's going to be the ace picked up cleanly across the map. 22 minutes, and AWE is ready to crack an inhib. I think one of the defining traits of New Wave Tsunami has been their ability to hang on in games when they really shouldn't and bring out the desperation plays. That being said, I don't think it's happening this time. They're so far behind everywhere. They're missing the key playmakers that need to be ahead. Victor with Crown and Zhonya's is still so far away from having meaningful damage and ornaments are, you know, 
maybe too little too late. They might come in before the game ends, but at this point, AWB can safely retreat towards this Baron. It should be theirs for the taking. Now they're going to decide to take some resets for HP. I think that's the nicest server to play. In a minute and 40 seconds, you get to make the play for Hex Tech Soul, and unless something insane happens, they're going to pick up that soul. And when they do, oh man, it's going to be tough for New Wave Tsunami to mount any kind of force. When I think of a team that's been able to make crazy things happen in the late stages, though, it's New Wave. When I think of a team that's able to win fights from 10k behind, it is New Wave. We've seen it happen. That's how they were able to bring their game back versus UB. That's how they had that monster fight, I believe, against TDE. Um, so it wouldn't be impossible to see it happen. It should be, but that's what New Wave Tsunami thrives on, is those games where it's like, yeah, this is impossible. This shouldn't be happening. Swifty steals a dragon. Uh, able to find some crazy engage. Reset pops off. Valiancy is able to find kills. We've seen everybody on this team have some crazy late game fights. They have the composition to do it with. You know, it's not impossible, but I've said, I've said that the cards are stacked against the wall way too many times, you know, against this team. And I've been wrong a lot of those times. I would love to be wrong. I would love to see them try and bring this game back right now. But from 10k behind at 23 minutes, the Baron is under pressure. And everyone's in bot side clearing out vision, trying to set up for this dragon. I think this is just going to be Baron over. Though, nobody here takes Baron very quickly. Very notable that they're doing this with three people. They're not over committing to this objective. They have Slowbro pushing in the uh, bot side at the moment. But Zeri takes objectives really slowly, especially with that renounce being the second pickup. And uh, it is just waiting on dragon right now they're going to try and burst this they don't have the consistent damage dealer of the ezreal they've committed him to the top side for the wave clear victor probably could also do that but you know what you take your assignments where you get them they do find this pick on a slowbro who's able to make this one a 1v1 against who though swifty is going to be the target right now does swifty lose this flashing out of his own cataclysm in the death realm and slowbro walks away with a kill there's no smite online now and now they've been waiting at this dragon for so long they cannot start it instantly and they can't start it with a smite yeah, we're seeing the power of item. Sunny, what are you doing? You're over the wall. Oh, no. And Oribe's on top of her. And there's no shot. Flash coming out from the side of Crimson. He is going to lock her up for good. Stormbringer for good measure. Oh, my goodness. The Kiana ulti catches out Oli. Valiancy looking for a trade back on the other side. But I don't think there's anything happening here. Give me a reset. Flashing out. Trying to pepper in Mystic shots. But it doesn't matter. Oh, there's so, so much close. damage. There's so much CC. Valiancy maybe getting up and skin of the team. But nope. Over the wall from Yan. Yan is going to do that. Oh, the ulti is really packed. Give me a reset. Pushing too far forward. Word. And oh my goodness, it's going to be another full map cleared for the side of AW. We're actually not going to find all elite, but it doesn't matter. You picked up the Baron, Slowbro with a very valiant play uh, <laughs> from the team that doesn't have valiancy on it. Um, make sure that even though it's a bit of a questionable macro decision from the side of AWB, the gold lead says it stands. And <laughs> oh, man, AP for reset? Over. KP for reset, picks up that thousand gold shutdown on the Seaborg. I think, you know, they're, they're clearly trying to stop Soul. I don't blame them. You get fixated on that, that's going to happen, and you really don't want to give it over. But you picked up two kills. That's better than you've done for the entire 26 minutes up until this point. You might as well stick with it, and they overextend. I was getting a little bit concerned. I don't know if you heard that from reset, just walking very, very close to the enemy team, not playing at a max distance on that Ezreal like you really need to, and as a result, gets caught out. Oriri able to find that engage. Crim's following up. They take them down. And what could have been a pocket of success turns into a just pounding coming through from AWE. There's been no, like, there was a quick breath of light, instantly stuffed. And now Slowbro soloing their red buff. And yeah, I don't think it. you put enough respect on Slowbro's name for the job that he's done in this game. Oh my goodness, shutting down Valiancy in that top side, not allowing anything to go through, and gets so far ahead. Three levels ahead of Swifty from taking Swifty's camps and a significant item lead means even on like 400 HP, Swifty can't 1v1 that Mordecai, so the shield's too fat. Challenging Smite? I don't need that 10% of damage. It doesn't matter. Slowbro putting on a massive showing, as well as really all members of AWE in this one playing really hot. They get a surge to playoffs, and this is how they are going to do it. It's by taking down the team that currently resides in that last playoff spot. And uh, it's up to New Wave to stun Ami to find a way to defend. Hey, there's a there's an ornament coming through onto Sunny's uh, crown. It would maybe be better if it was Luton's Tempest, but Sunny now getting caught out potentially. Oh, there's the engage from Crims. It's going on in the double Nexus turrets. They both been shut down. There's the first pick on a reset. That's your priority target. 
And I don't think target selection is too much of a concern right now. Crimson is going to try and get out of there right now. It is only Sunny alive. Valiancy caught in Death Realm. That is a double kill picked up for Seaborg. Ace is picked up for Yon Yon. And at 27 minutes with a score of 25 to 3, AWE is going to get themselves into the running for playoffs. Absolutely. And hey, MVP of the game still alive. Those pink wards down on the bot side of the map delivers AWE that victory. Pretty clean 28 minutes. Yeah, they they had the one hiccup during a fight that they still won. You know, it, it, they've looked very, very clean, very consistent. Uh, there's a reason why in the FOF Connect, most players uh, that, that were most members that were writing that did rank this as the sixth best team. They were expecting this team to have success and make it into that final playoff spot. We're seeing it here. They look great. They're able to mo rotate around the map, get good vision control on their bot side and play to it. It's the biggest thing is that they got themselves an advantage and they played to it very, very well. I want to give a huge shout out to, like you said, O'Riri for that vision control, but also Crims. We saw those two just controlling the bot side. It's hard to say too much else. They won the game through there. They won it through warding. They won it through vision control and playing to what information they had. Absolutely. And uh, hey, virtual high five uh, for RLS members i'm pretty sure that one from awe qualifies us for playoffs as uh Yay. Tsunami can now no longer catch us which means we're gonna lock in at least sixth place so uh thank you awe shout out to that one and hopefully we'll uh see you in the semi-finals on that one uh that being said uh we're gonna get you guys into an interview with a victorious awe finding their third win of the season and a little bit of life looking for playoffs we'll be back with that one stay behind and he will perform one of the most popular pieces of music in Asia, especially in Asian heritage. Hello everyone, Chris Edgeworth here with Seaborg of the Victorious Art of War Esports. How are you feeling, man? I that game felt really clean. That felt really good to play. <laughs> oh yeah, that was uh, that was clean. That was smooth. Um, let's talk about the draft uh, you folks put together. Um, 
They uh, they put a lot of trust in you when you uh, pulling out the Kiana in the mid lane. Uh, love that pick. I uh, like to see it played. It's very flashy, um, and you were uh, wonderful on it. Uh, people, I think, maybe just don't play uh, against it enough to like recognize how you have to like space against it. Like with the fight with Ezreal, like he probably should have killed you. He just got next to the wall. Yep. And that was that. Um, but uh, we'll talk about your Kiana play in a second. I just wanted to highlight that pick. We did also see the Mord Orn matchup in the top side, and Zeri not dead yet, uh, coming back in this game too. Uh, what, were, what were your thoughts on uh, the draft that you folks had put together and what you ended up up against? Our plan coming into the draft was to see if we could lock a Cassiopeia for the mid lane Kiana if it was left open, and they left open first phase. Uh, we pivoted that plan, saying, you know. Let's leave it open, see if we can get me to eat two bands with the Zoe Kiana. They left it open, picked the mid laner. We wanted to camp early, and we just sent it. <laughs> yeah, you, uh, well, I mean, hey, it, it definitely worked out. I think that, uh, unfortunately, uh, Sunny was not uh, meant to enjoy playing League of Legends today. Uh, <laughs> unfortunate for her. Um, let's let's uh, switch gears then, and let's talk about this uh, this mid, mid lane uh, Kiki Gap. <laughs> um, one thing that I that I think is interesting um, is that um, Kiana is also playable in the jungle as well, um, which I like because uh, she's much more involved in fights that might have uh, walls around them. Whereas with mid lane, you know, you kind of if you're fighting in lane, you're kind of limited unless you scrap near the the side. So, um, but it is a very potent assassin pickup. Um, and you piloted it excellently in this game. Talk to me a little bit, if you would, about your thoughts on playing out this matchup um, and getting such a decisive lead in this game. I personally really despise playing into Victor. Uh, it's just a mental thing. I don't know really what it was. Uh, I'm glad I had Crims here to help me out, burn those sums early, get that first blood down. And from there, just look for the skirmish, look for the solo kill when Victor steps out of place, uses his W too early. It, it felt good in lane for once. <laughs> yeah, there you go. I mean, it helps when you're going to have those annoying matchups where they're just going to poke you and, and contest you on every CS. Uh, you know, it's just like, all right, well, my jungler is just going to play in this lane too then if that's the way you want to play it. So very nice. Yeah. Uh, it was uh, quite a stomp. Uh, no two ways about it, folks, uh, for AWE, which um, this is, you know, we're towards you join this uh, team towards the middle of our season and now as we trend towards the end of our season uh awe uh is looking like a playoff team what are your what are your thoughts on uh the makeup of this team and how you folks are feeling uh, about your playoff prospects uh i think from the very beginning it was obvious since i joined the team that it has potential we just need to not make those stupid mistakes especially in mid game <laughs> that is the kind of plays you go what are they doing and then the game is over. Um, we managed to avoid that this game. It's something we're still working on. With any luck, we can close out the season really strong. Make it to playoffs. Go from there. Yeah, just try try not to flip it. That's basically <laughs> uh, all you can do at a certain point. All right, well, Seaborg, thank you so much for this interview. Uh, congratulations to Art of War Esports um, on this win and on uh, the recent success. Um, before we step away, though, your opportunity to leave us any final thoughts, any shout-outs, or any banter. Uh, well, Riri, you leaked my champ pool. It's time to get back. Uh, the Rakan pick was great this game. We're still putting you on Nautilus, even though you hate that champion. We love you. Thanks for playing it. <laughs> Alistar is not getting picked over Nautilus, my friend. And don't let my Kiana through draft. <laughs> there you go, folks. All right, well, that's it for this interview. We're going to take a short break, but we do have a wonderful Game 3 coming up very soon. So don't go too far. Maybe take a moment to check out the Friend or Foe Connect if you haven't already. I mean, we've been telling you all day. But you should really just get in the habit of checking that out. And, uh, you know, maybe uh, get some comfy clothes. Check out some of that Friend or Foe merch. Um, we're going to be back after a short break, folks. Don't go too far. Yeah. 